Hi guys and welcome back to my channel or if you're new to my channel, g'day. How's it going mate? My name is Ozzy Tash. Today we're going to be reacting to and watching top 10 reasons why not to move to the United States of America. But before we do, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. That would really help me out. Okay, the top 10 reasons why not to move to the United States of America. Let's find out why. Do you live in the US of A? Well, according to my YouTube analytics, there's a 72.5% chance you'd answer yes. But if your answer is no, and you've ever pondered whether fireworks, hot dogs, and getting a bald eagle tattoo sound like a good time, call me a demolition crew, cause I'm about to break it down for ya. I came in like a wrecking but ouch! Wait, seriously? That's what we're left with? An American flag, Tiger King, and are those huge toilet stall gaps? Remind me why we're like the only country that has those again. Well, it's cause we've also got this thing called American innovation. It's no wonder we have by far the best economy in the world and so many incredible things were invented here. The American dream has stood as a beacon of hope for people far and wide with over 200 different nationalities calling the US home. But while that diversity and innovation combined with gorgeous landscapes make the United States a great place to live, that doesn't mean it's perfect. Find out why in my top 10 reasons not to move to the USA. And let's hit 5,000 likes if you want to see a video on the 10 best countries for 2022. Number 10, the car dependent culture. Unless you live in New York, San Francisco, or the handful of other walkable cities with good public transit, you're gonna need a car to live in the USA. Especially the further west you go, as most of the country lacks any real urban planning and cities and towns are much more spread out. Now, if you've lived your entire life in the US, you might think this is normal. And it could even be a huge pro for you if you're someone who loves long drives on the open road. But it'll be a big culture shock if you're coming from a place in Europe Europe or Asia where cities are very walkable and public transportation is phenomenal. And it is creating a problem here considering the average American only takes around 5,000 steps a day, which is just half of what's recommended for a healthy lifestyle. In fact, many people in sprawling cities like LA, Phoenix, or Houston, as well as most rural parts of the country, don't even walk at all. And it's not like they really need to with drive throughs for everything from food to banks to pharmacies. Yeah, in Australia, we have pretty good public transport, but you need a car. You don't want to be catching the bus to work if you don't have to. drive through banks, that's cool. I don't think we have that here. That would be pretty good. Number nine, if you value your health. Considering that many Americans don't even walk, much less actively exercise, it should come as no surprise that 42.4% of US adults are obese, making it the 11th most obese nation in the world. And the severe lack of healthy food options in most parts of the country certainly doesn't help. In fact, there's tons of foods Americans eat regularly that are actually illegal in many other countries due to all the chemical additives. But that's not all. Even if you're not stuck living in a food desert where all you have to eat is corn puffs and Cousin Willie's buttery explosion popcorn, you still aren't out of the proverbial woods because mental health is also a huge issue here. 18.1% of US adults suffer from severe anxiety and 6.7% suffer from severe depression in a given year, making our depression rate the second highest of any country. That's pretty sad, isn't it, about the state of the mental health and anxiety and depression? But the food sizes, oh my god, I see reaction videos all the time in America. They upsize, upsize, upsize. And 5,000 steps on average? My gosh, I do about 20 to 25,000 a day at my job. Number eight healthcare. Poor health might be rampant in the US, but hey, at least there's quality healthcare to treat all the problems. Well, if you can afford it, because the US is the only industrialized nation to not offer universal health care for all of its residents. So every year, 20 to 45,000 people actually die just because they don't have health insurance. Not to mention how many Americans go broke from an unforeseen illness or injury. And you can't blame them. The average annual health insurance cost is nearly $7,500 for an individual and over $21,000 for a family. And even then, you still might have to pay out of pocket if the doctor or hospital that you go to is considered out of network. 
Pharmaceutical drugs and medicines also cost way more here than in other countries, so it's no wonder most Americans don't see a doctor until they absolutely have to, which often results in many minor issues that could have easily been prevented turning into major issues that need extensive care. Yeah, the healthcare system over there is pretty rough, isn't it? I've seen a few videos about it. It's not very good. If you guys are that rich, come on, do something about your healthcare. Number seven, it's expensive. Healthcare costs are just one of the many things that make the US the 11th most expensive country in the world. Although to be fair, at least it also does have the third highest purchasing power index since wages are pretty high too. And they better be because median rent costs in the US are the seventh most expensive globally with the median renter spending 31.1% of their income on rent. And poor renters, or those in the bottom 20% of incomes, spend nearly 75% of their income on rent. Now, if you're coming from Europe or Canada, you might find the cost of living as a whole to be about on par or even slightly lower. But compared to most of the world, the US's cost of living is through the roof. Especially when you realize sales taxes aren't included on the price tag of products, and you have to tip an extra 15 to 25% at restaurants. Yeah, the cost of living in America would be pretty rough with your minimum wage only being, what, $7? And then the tipping on top of that? In Australia, all those sales taxes, it's called GST, and it's already added into the purchase, so we don't have to add that on top. And it's not really customary in Australia to tip. Um, but like I said, our wait staff and retail staff, they're not getting $7 an hour. Number six, low wages and high poverty. What do you mean low wages? You just said America has high wages and a great economy. And yeah, it does. With the ninth highest nominal GDP per capita at $68,300. But that doesn't mean many people aren't struggling as there's also a huge division of wealth. If you can't manage to snag an actual good paying job, you're unlikely to make ends meet. Because with a federal minimum wage of just $7.25 an hour, or around $15,000 a year, the US only has the 17th highest minimum income among industrialized nations, despite having by far the best economy in the world. And sure, most workers here do make more than minimum wage, but 48 million of them still make less than $15 an hour, which in a lot of states still isn't enough to to get by. Not to mention, many Americans are also intentionally underemployed, so employers don't have to pay them benefits. I mean, the US being the only country other than Papua New Guinea and five small Pacific Island nations to not require paid family leave should show you how little this country cares about its workers. As a result, our international poverty rate is 17.8%, with an even higher rate of childhood poverty at 20.9%. That's really sad, isn't it? I've actually got a video coming out soon that talks about minimum wage in America, the healthcare and parental paid leave. So look forward to watching that. Number five, it's dangerous. Do you know what high poverty usually leads to? Crime. So it shouldn't be a surprise that the US is more dangerous than any other industrialized nation and the 36th most dangerous country overall. The crime rate is nearly triple that of most of Europe, and the homicide rate is over 10 times that of Europe. Now sure, it's not like you need to worry about being shot in broad daylight in most parts of the country, as the US isn't nearly as dangerous as a place like El Salvador, but there are many US cities that are among the most dangerous in the world, such as St. Louis, whose murder rate of 88 people per 100,000 is nearly double El Salvador's rate, and El Salvador is by far the most dangerous country. I don't really know what to say about that. Obviously, you know, we see on the news, there's a lot of crimes in the US, a lot of bad things that go on there. But I guess that's just what it is. And until they can change the laws or sort things out, I guess it's always going to be that way. Number four, education. Education in the US isn't like in most European countries where the quality of schooling is great regardless of where you live. It's a lot more like your three times divorced pansexual non-monogamous Aunt Tilda's relationship. Complicated. Many Americans actually choose where they're gonna live based solely on school districts. Cause one town might have amazing schools while the next city over has terrible funding and a student to teacher ratio of 40 to one. Heck, there have even been cases of students graduating high school without knowing how to read. Needless to say, the American education system is a dilemma. 
but at least there are other options, such as homeschool, charter school, private school, Montessori school, or old school. But no matter what school you choose, your kids will likely feel like they have to go to college even if the job they want doesn't require it. Higher education is heavily ingrained in the American culture, with many parents thinking their children will end up failures if they don't go to university. So unlike many other countries that put just as much of an emphasis on trade school apprenticeships or working, a college degree seems to be the only thing that matters to many Americans. And no, it's not free. And no, it does not guarantee you'll get a good job. All it does guarantee is that you'll probably be in debt until you're at least 50, because the total U.S. student loan debt of $1.75 trillion is growing six times faster than the nation's economy with no signs of slowing down. So in Australia, we don't call it college, we call it university. It's not free, but you don't have to pay for term or semester or whatever you call it over there. How it works here is that it's added to your tax bill. And once you have finished university or college, and you've started working, the university bill that you have accumulated gets taken from the tax that you'd received at the end of the year. So that's how you pay it off. Number three, geographic and ideational isolation. Many Americans think the U.S. is the best country, while objectively, it just isn't. And many of those same people have never visited another country before. Heck, even when Americans do travel, many don't care to learn about new cultures or broaden their horizons, and instead opt to stay in resorts or English-speaking areas where the culture is similar to what they're familiar with. In a sense, Americans are some of the most closed-minded people, and they don't even know it. And if you're an American watching this and want to rage at that comment, you're kind of proving my point. Maybe it's because of its geographic isolation and how difficult and expensive it is to travel to countries other than Canada or Mexico, or perhaps the superiority complex that the U.S. presents to the rest of the world, but nearly 30% of Americans have never left the country, and even more tend to have a very individualistic and closed mindset. As a result, many U.S. residents feel alone and don't have a sense of community, which is another reason for our high depression rates and can be a huge culture shock if you're coming from a country where an emphasis is put on family and caring about the collective. How do I respond to that, really? I'm not watching this to judge the Americans. I'm just trying to find out the top 10 reasons why not to move there. In Australia, we have those sort of things. We have people that are snobs. We have people that live in low income areas, medium income areas and high income areas. But I have reacted to a lot of videos showing that Americans do know a lot about their country and not about other countries. Number two, the country is very divided. Speaking of closed-mindedness, the two-party political system has really done us dirty. I mean, there's a reason few industrialized nations have it, because you can hardly get anything done. And our politicians and the reactionary media just seem to want to distract and divide us, separating the public into either Team Red or Team Blue. When in actuality, there's nuance to everything, and most Americans would probably agree on many of the same goals if labels weren't attached, and people could just have open and honest conversations without attacking each other. But that probably isn't going to be happening anytime soon, as more and more people just stay in their echo chambers and refuse to even listen to what someone with a different viewpoint has to say. Between the the ever-increasing classism and continuously polarizing government agendas, the divisiveness of the social and political atmosphere in our nation is the worst it's been since the Civil War. When states were so divided, they literally left the country. Speaking of which, Canada is actually preparing for us to have another Civil War. Now before we get to number one, make sure you leave a like and subscribe and comment which country you want me to cover next. The American government and how it all works there. That's a can of worms that I'm not going to get into. I really don't understand it. In Australia, you have to vote. It is illegal if you don't. You get fined. In America, I believe you don't have to vote. It's not law. In Australia, it is. Number one. 
It's very difficult to immigrate here. If everything on this list so far doesn't in the slightest way concern you, and you're like, sign me up, yeah, the US still sounds awesome. Well, I hate to break it to you, but you probably won't be able to move here. Because while the US does have the most foreign born residents by far, accounting for nearly 20% of all immigrants in the world, they're also just the select few of the hundreds of millions of applicants. To even have a shot at meeting the immigration requirements, you'll need to either marry an American citizen, be an award-winning writer, scientist, or tech mogul, be a skilled worker not born in India or China, and if you are born in India, China, the Philippines, or Mexico, be prepared to wait in line for at least a few decades. Or you could be a refugee, although 75% of asylum seekers are still denied. This is honestly the biggest reason why people who want to move here don't. It's a ton of work, requires a lot of time and money, and there's no guarantee you'll even be allowed in. From what I've been learning about, the migration laws of moving to Australia, Canada and America are all very similar. They're very, very strong. They want you to be highly skilled, highly trained or they just don't want to have a bar of you. Okay, that was my video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, leave a comment why. Do you agree with the top 10 reasons not to move to America? Also, check out my reaction videos 10 reasons not to move to Australia, and 10 reasons not to move to Canada. Okay, cheers from down under. Thanks for watching. Bye.